Hi everyone, this video is going to be the final chapters of Assemble with Care 9 through 13, including the, the day, epilogue. To Carmen's apartment, the door was opened by someone I didn't expect to see, Helena. Sorry for inflicting this mess on you. Carmen's never seen a knickknack she doesn't want to buy, apparently. Carmen's apartment was a little chaotic, but totally charming. It was easy to imagine her living in a place like this. It definitely wasn't Helena's style. She seemed more upmarket than flea market. I wondered why she was even here. We're having a clear out, or at least I am. Carmen's not helping, as usual. There's a market at the festival tomorrow. I'm selling some of these things to make her some money. She says she has nothing when there's all this stuff right under her nose. Helena stepped delicately past the items on the floor and reached down to pick up one from the pile. Look at this slide projector. Our parents treasured it, but Carmen treats it like a piece of junk. Can you take a look? Oh, typical. Carmen's even managed to get a slide stuck in here. That light bulb is completely smashed. Okay, I'll need to redirect the light to the lens at the top for the projector to work. I was so excited when I moved to the city. Carmen, she looks so sad. Here's the clicker you'll need to attach. <laughs> God knows how Carmen broke that as well. Looks like something is still missing. When we were younger, Carmen was always following me around. I suppose she looked up to me. A cool older sister. She used to ask me when I was coming home, but I was always too busy. Helena was transfixed. Staring at the two young sisters, the projector had brought glaringly into focus. I... Oh, I never meant to let her down. But you haven't, have you? 
You came all this way just to help with the cafe. Plus the money. <sighs> That's the problem. There is no money. I lost my job a few months ago. My savings are almost gone. I have nothing. Carmen thinks I'll throw my checkbook at her bad decisions and make them okay. But I can't. Not this time. You know, the funny thing is, I came here wanting to tell her the truth. But she's so infuriating. How can I ask her for help when all she cares about is herself? Helena fell silent, shrinking under the gaze of her younger self, projected onto the wall. We drifted so far apart when I moved away. It felt like the only thing keeping us together was my bank balance. I know I have to tell her the truth. It isn't fair. But I already lost everything else. <sighs> what if I lose her too? The day of the festival finally came, and after all my hard work, I was ready to put down my tools and pick up a fork. The smell as I entered the main square was incredible. Each stall was selling food even more delicious than the last. The competition would start any minute. Most stall holders were waiting anxiously for the mayor to pay them a visit. All of them, that was, except Carmen, who was still frantically chopping vegetables and stirring pots. Maria! Thank God you're here! Can I ask you the world's biggest favor? Helena was supposed to help me run the store today, but she never turned up. Probably too ashamed to show her face. I can't believe she lied to me! Carmen was stirring so furiously, she was in danger of tipping the pot over altogether. The mayor will be here any minute for the judging, but I'm almost out of my special. She wasn't really going to ask me, was she? Not on my day off. I have a stove ready to build and everything. Can you set it up and make me a spare batch? Oh, her recipe is a bit smudged. Never mind, I'm sure whatever I put in will be fine. That pot is really boiling now. Smells great, if I say so myself. Here are the ingredients that Carmen's given me. What to add first? I'll scoop a spoonful when I'm ready to serve. My part done, Carmen took over and added the finishing touches. It was just in time, and a moment later, Joseph arrived with Izzy in tow. Carmen anxiously handed them both a serving. That was so tasty. Can I have some more, please? Well, you've certainly earned yourself a loyal customer in my daughter. We have a few more meals to taste, but so far you are one of the best. Good luck.
Joseph and Izzy looked so happy together. Maybe the festival was doing them some good after all. Carmen, on the other hand, seemed annoyed. But why, when it had all gone so well? I wish Helena was here to see this. She's so convinced I'll never succeed at anything. She wants what's best for you. She's just not very tactful about it. Yes, I, I, kn I know, I know. Even when I was a kid, she pushed me when no one else did. I just wish she hadn't lied to me. But then, I've asked so much of her over the years, I never stopped to think how much she actually had to give. The festival finished. I only had one day left before I had to catch my train and leave Bella Riva behind. I couldn't go without saying goodbye to Carmen. So that evening, I made my way to the cafe. It was unrecognizable. She'd done it. Best food in Bella Riva. Half the town was outside waiting to see what the fuss was about. Maria, Maria, my favorite sous chef, come on through. It was Carmen, acting every inch the successful cafe owner she deserved to be. Even Helena was there, serving the coffees. This was the last place I expected to see her after yesterday's drama. Carmen led me through to a balcony upstairs, where she brought out an old record player. I found out where Helena was on the day of the festival. She was selling her camera to clear the cafe's debts. But then she didn't have much left for herself. So, I've asked her to come and stay with me for a while. We have a lot of catching up to do. I wanted to give her this, to cheer her up. We listened to it all the time when we were kids. Do you think it has one last tune in it? Okay, let's see what happens when we turn this on. Here's the problem. This wiring isn't connected properly. isn't connected properly. I should check the wiring. That's the speed dial connected. Now we should be able to change it. should do it. This record should play beautifully. Hmm, it's spinning the wrong way. How can I get it to play in the right direction? It must be to do with the motor. Let's see if one of these spares can turn things around. Turn the volume up, I should be able to hear it now. Well, it's playing in the right direction. 
I should check it's turning at the correct speed. What will we made of these days? The sweetest word. player's crackling tune must have caught Helena's ear as she appeared a few moments later. Is that my old record player? I can't believe you've kept it all these years, Carmen. Leaning over the music, they looked just like the young sisters the slide projector had preserved all these years, inseparable once again. Carmen told me about your camera. That was a really generous thing to do. I loved that camera, but I love my sister more. Now it's her time to be the person she wants to be. I'm going to stay here with her for a while. Make up for lost time. Carmen and Helena's relationship wasn't suddenly going to be perfect, but they were both prepared to try. And to think, it had all started because of a call Carmen made about some seasoning tips. I guess in the end, maybe it wasn't so hard to just pick up the phone and dial. I hadn't spoken to my own parents in a year. I wanted to hear their voices more than anything. But the silence between us was so cavernous. I didn't know how I'd ever find the words to bridge it. Final morning in Bella Riva, I received one last call out to Joseph and Izzy's house. I knew I had to pack, but I figured I could squeeze in one final job before I had to leave. When I arrived, I found Joseph tidying up his wilderness of a garden. The playhouse was already cleared. Inside, I could see Izzy happily testing out her screw driving skills on the back of her cassette deck. You've made quite the impression. Isabel, Izzy, tells me she's going to be a repair woman like Maria. <laughs> I'm sure she could be anything she wanted if she put her mind to it. She could. She's a brilliant child. Spending the day with her at the festival, I haven't had so much fun in ages. I wanted to give her something before she starts to forget. Inside, the house was transformed, flooded with light and the sounds of the garden. It felt alive again. This would be my last repair in Bellariva, but it felt like it was the house that had really been restored. It's a music box. It used to play beautifully, but now when I wind it up, nothing happens. I'd love for Izzy to hear it sing again. Can you help? Maria, could you add this family picture of us?
mechanism is completely broken. I'll need to take it all apart before I can fix it. Perfect. The mechanism is good as new. There's still a part I need to attach. Where does it go? Still a few parts missing. That's everything back together again. I should play it to make sure. My wife used to sing this song to Izzy each night before bed, but I always work too late to join them. Will you dream a dream for me? If I sit by your side and hold you so tight. I've missed so much already. I want to be the father my wife wanted me to be. I've ended up so much like my own father, working all the time. Izzy needs me more than that, especially now it's just the two of us. My daughter comes first. Well, not until she gets bored of her stuffy old dad anyway. I'll never ever get bored of you, Dad. Izzy came running into the room where Joseph scooped her up and onto his shoulders. She gazed at the music box, her eyes shining. I'd never seen her look so happy. Thank you, Maria, for everything. The things you fixed for me, I'm so glad to have them back. Joseph was a good father, and I could tell he was determined to be an even better one. When it came down to it, that was all any of us wanted. A second chance to make something right. My time in Bellariva was almost over, but before I left, I knew there was something of my own I needed to fix. Time in Bellariva was almost at an end. Another chapter finished in a story whose ending I hadn't felt ready to write. The people I'd met, the items I'd restored, they'd taught me so much about what was really important. Pulling out my suitcase from beneath the bed, I remembered the day I stole it from my parents' shop, the day I left. Afterwards, I was too ashamed to call them, to apologize. It was the guilt I'd been carrying around every day since. As I packed, I knew that it was up to me to find a way to lighten the load.
train ticket. I can't believe it's time to leave Bellariva behind. Helena gave me these designer shirts. Not sure I'll pull them off as well as she does. The recipe for Carmen's special. I'm under strict instructions to guard it with my life. Joseph's idea of light reading for the train. It does look thorough. The soundtrack to my travels. I'll be listening to this on the journey. My parents would love Bellariva. Maybe I can convince them to make the trip. Izzy gave me this in exchange for my repair manual. She'll be a pro in no time. My suitcase was full, but it was my heart that felt heavy as I made my way to the station. I was sorry to be leaving Bellariva behind, but I hoped that in my own small way I'd made a difference. Elena and Carmen's reunion was possible because they'd learned to overcome their differences. Joseph had realized he shouldn't let his grief or his work get in the way of his relationship with Izzy. They'd each learned to see things from someone else's perspective. Maybe it was time I saw things through my parents' eyes. I knew it would be easier to jump on the next train put even more distance between us, but I finally felt ready to talk to them. I just didn't know if they would feel the same. Did I even remember their number? I wasn't sure until I reached for the phone and it all came flooding back. Mom? Dad? Maria? Is that you? Sorry I haven't written. The cafe's been absolutely manic since you left. Luckily, I have Helena here to help. You wouldn't recognise her. She's like a new woman. She's always running round, taking orders and making drinks. I even heard her compliment a customer on their outfit. Personally, I draw the line at fluorescent green bowling shirts, but each to their own. It certainly made the customer smile. She misses the city, though. Bellariva's many things, but it's definitely not as chic as she'd like. She said there was a coffee shop near her old apartment where they made coffee with a shape drawn on top. It got me thinking, I'm an award-winning chef. I can figure out how to put a leaf on a cappuccino. A bit of cosmopolitan coffee might be just what Helena needs. Of course, ordering a new coffee machine was the easy part. I wish you could have seen the mess I got into trying to put the thing together. I saw Maria use her screwdriver a million times. Taking this apart will be easy. Maybe 
I should focus on the pipes first. They look easy. Uh. Start with them. Oh, I wish Maria was here. She'd know how to put these pipes together. Finally, no more steam. Are all of these parts supposed to go in there? I think that's everything. 
better test the buttons, just to make sure. All done! Piece of cake. Time to make my first coffee, I think. to make it look magical. Mmm, a perfect coffee. All it needs is a saucer and a couple of Helena's favourite biscuits. I was feeling more has-been than coffee queen by the time I'd made a drink fit for human consumption. It looked a bit, uh, mm, postmodern, but knowing Helena's refined tastes, I hoped she'd think it was intentional. Always the connoisseur. She didn't even bother to look at it at first. She was so busy wafting it under her nose. Steamed up her glasses, of course. How was she going to see my work of art through an eye full of fog? When she finally spotted it, though, she was totally impressed. I'll admit, she spent several minutes trying to figure out exactly what it was I'd drawn. She decided it was probably a horse. <laughs> well, what she doesn't know won't hurt her. She was impressed enough to ask for another one. I guess I'll need to get some practice in. The whole thing was such hard work, Maria. I never realised how difficult it was, all that mechanical stuff. It made me realise how much I have to thank you for, so I wanted to say that now. Better latte than never! <laughs> <sighs> Hoping you're well. Your friend, Carl. Alright, so that is the end of Assemble with Care. Now, if you remember in the demo levels where I mentioned I wasn't a fan of story-based games, well... Now finishing the game, I would have to say I really enjoy this story. Um, however, I feel like they left a cliffhanger where Maria contacted her parents, but there was nothing more to it. So maybe there's going to be a sequel to this. I don't know. But um, yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. I f do feel like it was more stor heavy story based rather than the puzzles but all in all it was a good game and I enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe, click the bell notification icon so you stay updated of new uploads. Thanks for watching!